Welcome to a noob's guide to Kazrak One-Eye. This is Kazrak One-Eye. He's called this because, well, take, take a guess. As far as nicknames goes, it's about as fearsome as Benny Ninefingers or Kevin who drives the janky Honda Civic. But this lameness is certainly on par for what's unanimously considered to be the worst race in Total War Warhammer. And Kazrak here is more remembered as the whipping boy for everyone's favorite hot toddy than an actual purveyor of chaos. If you're watching this in the distant future, maybe children are again returning to school, bars are reopened, and the beastmen no longer suck. But this video will still remain as a monument to how terrible they and Kazrak once were. Because the beastmen and Kazrak one eye aren't just missing an eye. They're a festering open wound that refuses to heal and weeps a dripping yellow pus that spreads its foul decay and rot on everything it touches. For the uninitiated, Beastmen are a games workshop creation that started as a joke about mythological creatures and animal farm. In ancient mythology, fauns and satyrs were originally quite different creatures, with fauns being half goat men known for their foolish mirth, and satyrs depicted as stocky, hairy, ugly dwarfs, so basically dwarfs, with horse tails who like to kidnap peasant women and then forcibly procreate with them. Guess which version the Brits went with on this one? It's no coincidence that the nickname for Kazrak One-Eye is also an oh-so-witty double entendre about certain girthy man-goat parts. You can almost hear the writers at Games Workshop slapping their thighs and braying with laughter as they wrote the original Beastmen lore, which included graphic depictions and hints about where the new ones came from. There's been a bit of course correcting since then, though, and their new origin is that when the Great Polar Warp Gates collapsed, chaos was released into the world, bathing the pastoral nomadic peoples of the northern forests in demonic starter juices. Great big honking chunks of warp stone rained down on them, and the tribesmen were fused together with their livestock, leaving them with a braying bloodlust towards bougie man tribes and an understanding that all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. The Beastmen still occasionally top off their numbers by capturing human women, allowing chaos-touched humans into their ranks, or even adopting mutant babies abandoned by their parents. But these can hardly account for the never-ending Bray Herds. Some say Beast Women do exist, but good luck finding an official game model or miniature to prove it. The Creative Assembly has continued the trend of Beastmen lore neutering by removing any relevant ungulate reproductive organs from the game, leaving the Beastmen with even more reason to hate humanity. And that's a motive Kazrak can get behind. He's spent years raiding the Empire of Man from his My Little Brony base with little to show for it. He may be the most cunning and dangerous beast lord in the Drock Vault, but it's a lonely throne that sits atop a warherd yif pile. And even then, he had to climb a writhing pile of grunty, furry, sweaty bodies to reach the top working his way up from lowly gore fluffer to personal bestigore lube carrier of Graktar, the leader of the biggest, horniest herd in the old world. Graktar was unbeatable in a fair fight, so one day after an especially grueling battle, Kazrak challenged him to an unfair fight, where Kazrak ripped off the old goat's horns and blew one like a trumpet. Because when you're already a cursed mutant, someone else's blood on your lips seems far less dangerous. Graktar can even be seen in game as part of Kazrak's questline. You kick his butt there too, but Kazrak doesn't like to blow his own horn about it. As a new beast lord, Kazrak found he was exceptionally capable of harnessing the unruly spirit of the herd, devising simple but brutally effective strategic battle plans. These normally consist of sending fast-moving melee infantry and large monsters to charge in after an ambush for a hard-hitting attack. Not exactly complex stuff, but hey, beastmen. In the fight, they suffer from low leadership, low armor, and will die or rout within seconds. Thankfully, they're cheap to recruit, and Kazrak doesn't care who gets made into mutton. Kazrak himself hits like a truck and has vanguard deployment, but lacks the health and defense necessary for long fights. To get him into the thick of it faster, you can mount him on a Razor Gore chariot that he stole from another 8th edition character, 
Gorthor the Beast Lord, but don't expect a Cetra level of dominance while mounted. What makes Kazrak special are his two unique weapons. Scourge, his special whip with attack bonuses that makes every Lady Gore around him go sploosh with its splash attacks, and his Dark Mail, which gives 20% damage resistance and totally wasn't stolen from Freddie Mercury's closet. Kazrak's campaign abilities focus on giving additional leadership when fighting humans and more income from raiding which, considering you'll be raiding human cities for the entirety of the game, makes sense. His faction bonuses and army are focused on Bestigors, which are the best beastmen gores, promoted from the bottom where they got an extra eye in the middle of their name to make Kazrak feel better. As the strongest, meanest, and most erotically violent of the entire Bray Herd, Bestigors are your heavily muscled, tastefully oiled, BDSM armored front line. They charge in with their axes leveled, ready to hew any foe, and then do unspeakable things to their corpses. Kazrak recruits them at half cost and with a little extra experience and upkeeps them for less. With his extra charge bonus, Bestigor should be the bee's knees, ready to charge in with high armor and do heavy armor-piercing damage to anything they come across. And they do. They're very effective against slow, heavily armored factions like dwarfs and lizardmen. But most times, you're not fighting dwarfs and lizardmen. You're fighting humans, and thanks to a laughable melee defense, they will make your bestigors into black pudding and eat them for breakfast in prolonged fights. Though all of this assumes you can even manage to stay alive long enough to unlock bestigors thanks to the beastmen's atrocious horde mechanics, which are probably why Kazrak repeatedly raids and sad sacks his way around the Drac Vault in a desperate attempt to level his Bray herd. The other half of his problem is this guy. It's me, fucking Toddy! Kazak One Eye is on the prowl again! We have to take him down! I really have fucking. Boris Toddbringer, the Elector Count of Middenland, who was very nearly voted the next Emperor of Man before Karl Franz outplayed him. Instead, this energetic but blunt instrument has made a career of chasing Kazrak's woolly rump around his province. Toddy even caught Kazrak with his pants down mid-raid one time and used his rune fang to slice an eye out. Of course, the Beast Lord managed to slip away, but the eye never really healed and still leaks blood and pus on anything in splattering distance. Kazrak was so overwhelmed by this first defeat at Toddy's rugged hands that he retreated to a cave to plot his revenge. There, he pondered and schemed. And when his wicked eye began to gleam, he knew he'd found a scheme oh so cunningly mean. <laughs> So he ambushed Boris, tore out his eye, and then urinated in the socket, because even Shakespeare wrote fart jokes sometimes. But then Kazrak let Boris live, because victory is boring, and Kazrak had found something more important, an equal to match wits against. With Toddy in his life, he would never be alone again. Sadly, Boris gave off mixed signals and posted a bounty of 10,000 gold crowns for Kazrak's head. A few mercenary armies tried to claim it, but after Kazrak stopped defiling their corpses, he sent a survivor back to let Toddy know that he didn't take it personally and was still interested. Since then, the two have met and fought repeatedly, always trading off with who comes on top. But every year, Kazrak's army gets bigger and more forts and castles are trampled beneath his cunning hooves. But anyone who has played Kazrak's campaign knows that is an outright lie. He's saddled with slow growth, low income, no base, beast paths ripped off from dwarf underways, and bray herds stolen from the old greenskin wah system, as well as a mechanic that finds finds new ways to dick you every seven turns. It's so amazingly unfun that I'm honestly astounded that CA managed to so perfectly capture the absolute shittiness that is Kazrak's life. In the face of this relentless, soul-crushing existence, this overly intelligent bighorn sheep only wants to play a never-ending game of tag with his one-eyed bestie as the world burns around them. But even that isn't allowed, as Kazrak starts on the opposite end of the continent in Estalia. With so little lore, there's actually not much else to say about Kazrak unless we talk about the end times, which everyone rightly loves to hate on, yet lets it color how they feel about certain characters anyway. <clears throat> Manfred. Kazrak One-Eye, though, went out like he lived 
trying to get Toddy to return his love like a Wattpad fantasy. Kazrak rolled up to the walls of Middenheim and held a jukebox over his head, and flaunted and taunted Boris so viciously that he finally gave in and left the safety of his walls just to pin that beast man's hairy backside to the ground, which allowed Archeon and his Chaos Army to attack and then bring about the end of days. But Boris didn't care. He pursued his hirsute life partner deep into the darkest woods for a final encounter, where Boris gave in to his animal instincts and plunged his sword deep into Kazrak's sweaty body, so that they both bellowed screams of ecstasy and relief. Kazrak fell to the ground and then looked up at Toddy, where they held each other's gaze, eye to eye. And then a pile of bestigors jumped out of the bushes and ran a train on Boris until he died. I like to think that the bestigors last act was to lay Boris next to their fallen leader so they could embrace one last time, meeting death together, having learned that taking an eye for an eye just leaves the whole world blind to love. So show the world what it means when a billy goat gets gruff. Take the fate of the beast men in your mutant hands and become the great goat man that mounts the world. So that when Kazrak's day finally comes and the beast men are fixed, you can prove that sometimes the grass is actually greener on the other side. If you enjoyed this noobs guide, there are others just like it on this channel, and you might consider becoming a patron to help make these possible, as well as vote on what noobs guide will be next. But as always, thanks for watching.